What's going on guys? My name is Renegade, so we're here to ask and answer the question, how good is Lycan class? Lycan class is actually pretty old, but it's still a fairly decent farming class. As always with this series, I'm going to be covering how to obtain the class, what enhancements to use, what weapon range to use, what the abilities and passives do, how to use the class, how well it serves its designated purpose, in this case it's farming, and finally, I'll wrap up things with my own opinion on said class. If you'd like any other classes to receive this treatment, then let me know in the comment section down below, on Twitter or on Discord, links for all that are in the description. Either way though, let's start off the video by going over how to obtain Lycan. You can obtain Lycan class by ranking up the Lycan reputation to rank 10 at slash join Lycan, and then purchasing the class from the rep shop. Or you can obtain the class for 2000 ACs from Ragnar and Badalon. Enhancements for this class, like many fighter based classes these days, is simple. Don't use fighter, use luck. You'll have better survivability with fighter, but your damage is reduced by too much to justify using it. Your survivability is fine with luck, and your damage is much better than any other enhancement. Full luck is 100% the way to go. Weapon range for Lycan is not really much of an issue. A stable weapon will allow you to predict the damage of your nuke ability better, whereas an unstable weapon tends to generally raise your overall DPS, but lowers the damage of your nuke. Your nuke is more useful in situations when you're fighting lower HP monsters, but when fighting higher HP monsters, it's better to have your overall DPS higher. Now I mention all this, but it varies quite a lot and it really isn't a big deal. Just use whatever weapon you're comfortable using. Now Lycan is a class from an era where classes didn't really have rank 10 passives, or they sometimes did, but it was kind of rare. These days, it pretty much every class does, but anyway, this class has two rank 4 passives. One of them increases your haste by 10%, and your crit chance by 5%, and then one of them decreases the damage you take by 15%. Now, like I said before, Lycan is a fairly old class, and it's from an era where Tooltips, you know, when you hover over an ability and it shows you like a little description of what the ability does, didn't actually explain what the abilities did very well. So Lycan's one of those classes, so what I'm doing with this is I'm explaining what the tooltips do and then I'm going to use the wiki page for this class, which thankfully has notes on what each ability does in detail to explain, you know, the class's abilities. So ability number one is just your auto attack. It's a completely standard, you know, two second cooldown, physical strike or whatever. It's completely just normal auto attack. Ability number two is called Savagery. It consumes 15 mana and has a four second cooldown. This ability does two times auto attack damage to two targets in range. It is unavoidable and cannot crit. Ability number three is called Thrill of Battle. It consumes 20 mana and has a six second cooldown. This ability does the same amount of damage as your auto attack to two targets in range, in far range. Um, applies Predation to the player, a heal over time increasing with each stack, stacks up to four times and lasts 12 seconds. This is a, you know, obviously it's a stackable ability, so this cooldown is is quite short actually for this when you when you consider the haste buff as well on one of the passives. And yeah, this stacks up to about 280, sort of 300 hot at my current level, but that will be different depending on your level, I believe. Your next ability is called Pouncing Strike, and it consumes 30 mana, has a 20 second cooldown, slightly shorter than 20 seconds, you need to remember because of the haste boost. Um, this ability deals 3.5 times auto attack damage to the target in melee range, applies it disorientated to the enemy, lowering their critical strike chance by 50%, and their dodge chance by 30%, lasts 15 seconds. This ability is the nuke ability that I described before. This It's kind of a nuke, not really. Um, when I use Unarmed, with this ability here, and I'm level 85, need to remember, I can get about 4k pretty reliably as a, as a crit with this ability, so it's kind of a nuke, but not really. Finally, your last ability is called Howl of Terror. It consumes 20 mana, has a 12 second cooldown. This ability applies one of four stuns. It's a it's not a damage ability, it's just a, an effect ability. One of the four stuns are called Dull Surprise, Spooked or Shaken, or Primal Fear. And each of these stuns essentially just has a different length on them. They're not actually doing anything different in terms of the effect. As for how to use this class, I already mentioned that it's pretty basic, it's quite old, so it, none of the abilities have any meaningful effect on each other. Um, the only thing I can really recommend to you is, one, use a mana vamp. This class is uh, has some mana problems, so to, to help with that, I'd recommend you use a mana vamp enhancement from Slash Join Museum. If you're unfamiliar with that, you just go to Slash Join Museum and find the vendor there. She's just in this first room now. And go to the ore enhancements and find a luck mana vamp 
enhancement for your weapon and a player, and that'll, that should help you out with mana a little bit. Now, using this class in combat in a farming situation, really, my recommendation to you is to avoid using ability 5, unless you really just feel like you just need to stun them for some reason. Not sure, not sure why you'd need to, but it's it's the stun is pretty use, useless, and it's just going to consume mana that you shouldn't really be using. Um, so use the stun, I guess, when you've got spare mana, or when you really just feel like you need to stun them, but honestly it's not not useful at all. And as for the other abilities, apply 3 as soon as you can, it's going to start stacking your hot. Um, apply ability 4 maybe as soon as you can as well, so maybe 3, then 4, and 2 doesn't apply any effects, it's just a damaging ability, so just use 2 as much as you can. And that's pretty much it. Um, I still find myself running out of mana, so maybe don't use... Two as, as much if you're going to be running out of mana. Ability 3 and 4 are the important ones that apply effects and your heal and stuff. But other than that, I mean, avoid using 5, apply 3, then 4, and then just spam everything else. Don't let your heal run out. Um, and keep in mind that 4 is a fairly decent sized hit generally, especially if it crits. So keep that in mind, I guess. And so maybe don't use it on a monster if it's got like 300 health left. That's pretty much it. Finally, this is the part of the video where we wrap things up with how good this class serves its purpose and uh, my own opinion on the class. So first of all, this class's purpose is farming, but you can kind of use it for soloing. Now let's just explain this class's mana regeneration first of all. So in its class overview like stats page, it says Lycans gain mana when they strike an enemy in combat or are struck by an enemy in combat. This class targets two monsters with two of its abilities, so it is a farming class. Um, but also that mana regeneration that I was talking about earlier and how it's kind of bad um, That is the case when fighting two monsters Now when you solo you're fighting one monster which means you are being struck by one uh, You're being struck by an enemy less in combat when you solo than over farming and you are striking less enemies in combat So you regenerate even less mana when you solo with this class So you can solo and you can actually loop the heal quite quite manageably. You don't actually run out of, of mana when, when trying to loop the heal, so that's fine. Um, so yeah, it can kind of solo, but it's pretty slow, and it generally just does farming better. So how good is it for... F it's, it's, it's like an okay soloing class. It's really not that good, though. It's just kind of kind of average, I suppose. Um, now for farming, though, it's actually pretty decent. It's not that bad. The thing that really makes this class shine in, in a lot of areas is its ability number 4, the nuke ability that I mentioned. It's not a 20 second cooldown, yes, but it does actually a pretty reliable, you know, like sort of 4k crit that you can really rely on to just strike a low health enemy and kill them pretty quickly. Like, it's, it's a valuable thing to have an ability like that in a class, and so I do give it credit there for having that. However, in really long farming situations, you know, you might need to farm, I don't know, Dark Makai for hours and hours on end for some reason I can't remember I can't think of why you might need to but it's probably a situation where you do um, you're probably going to be better off using a class that does more I guess just more damage this class is old it deals damage based on multiples of your auto attack so you're really getting like sort of 600 hits there and sort of a 300 hit there and oh cool we got the nuke of 4k but like that's not available for another 30 seconds or 18 seconds, I guess, because of the haste buff or whatever. But yeah, it's 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 damage is it's consistent, which is which I like to have in a class. You know, consistency is good, but it's just kind of lacking a little bit in terms of it's just just I guess it's a not day to day DPS, but just DPS when you're not using your nuke. Um, and also, you know, you've got the, the, the stun ability, which is just kind of useless. It's not really that, that useful in uh, farming or soloing situations. So it's a it's an okay farming class. It's pretty easy to rank up like in reputation, and it's a cool theme, I suppose. But honestly, my opinion on this class is it's super boring, super basic, and there are much better options out there. That's my personal opinion. Not worth the 2k ACs at all. If you're going to spend 2k ACs on a farming class, if you want something really good for 2k ACs um, that's going rare, then Royal Vampire Lord. And if you want, if, if it's a time of the year where you can't get that, then probably Blazebinder, or maybe Eternal Inversionist, or Daemon, or one of those type classes. Those classes are newer and better. This class is kind of old, It's kind of it kind of shows its age, and uh, honestly it needs a buff. One really good buff they could do is a uh, making the auto attack hit two monsters. That would be a pretty just simple buff that would make this class a lot better. 
Also, maybe your nuke targeting two monsters instead of just, just the one and maybe making it a guaranteed hit, guaranteed crit. That would be pretty powerful and pretty useful. Um, and I don't, I still don't think it would make it too overpowered, I guess. I don't know. Those, that's just my thoughts on the situation. But yeah, hopefully you guys did enjoy this video. If you did, leave a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.